is up y'all it's me tasha c and welcome to the tasha c show podcast shout out to my youtube and podcast fam hugs and loves positive body safety blessed manifestation positive manifestations and more and hugs and loves and and in and, and positive manifestation blessings and more manifestations and, and people who support me in advance y'all um even though I'm a little bit sleepy because it is 2.59 a.m. in the morning on April the 16th, 2020. So we went past hump day and now we're on terrific Thursday, I guess you could say. So I wanted to go ahead and, like I said, do these. Get out with I'm just going to do two biggerrb.coms. If you don't know, this is another episode of our history, you know, our kings and queens. I was going to say our history. I meant to say our kings and queens next door volume. I think this is either probably volume 76. I'll make sure to put it if, you know, like, interested or paying attention, like, to the numbers, like, in the title and also in the description. If you're wondering about my, um, YouTube channel, be just listen to my podcast, um, it is Tasha C TV. Okay, y'all. Eventually, y'all, uh, I'll, you know, go back to doing, again, like, another one of my podcasts where I just do, like, talk about entertainment, other topics and everything. But just right now, i just been, like, just felt more comfortable just at the time, just doing our kings and queens, and it's just, I know I'm just, like, carrying on before I start my, um, you know, reading of the articles that I have for today, but, I mean, I'm just surprised that I, I, I've been able to still do this series, which was meant to just do one month, and might be able to hopefully carry it on to see about a year or even more, even after, if that now would be phenomenal, if I can even carry this even past, say, even my other YouTube uh, year series that I was doing, which I'm still doing right now, I'm just using our Kings and Queens podcast. I've been doing this for like a month and a half, probably more than that. But anyway, I thank you all. And I'm also doing this, y'all, because I realize I'm starting to <laughs> and I'm trying to make sure I stay up so that way I can get these out. So this, again, is going to be, again, kind of a shorter ones. Because usually, y'all, when I do the King and Queen podcast, I usually talk about 20 minutes. Sometimes you get a little bonus and get a little passed over. But I usually want to keep them 20 minutes or less. So, I was originally just going to read um, Dr. Maddie, Maddie um, Clark's or Wikipedia. Um, but I don't feel like doing that today. You know, and just do that. Like I did the Clark sisters. And sometimes some articles be so long that I'm better off just reading one. And I learned that the hard way about a week or a week and a half ago when I read a thorough, it was a good story, but it was like a, a short story in a series and not like, you know, like 10 to 15 pages. Yeah, well, there were like 10 to 15, it seemed like 15 pages because if I didn't check on it, I still had about 10 more minutes, I think, about to go. And I went on, you know, so it, it was good. It was quite lengthy. Entertainment and informative, but quite lengthy. But anyway, y'all, let's get into um, one of the first person again. I said on biggerography.com is Ella Fitzgerald, okay, who was born 1917 and actually passed away in transition over to go to God in uh, 1996. Now, originally, there this article was posted on January 19, 2018, but it was updated January uh, 20. Uh, I was. It, it is actually 20, uh, 22, 2020. Okay. Now, again, I always tell y'all when you go to bigarvy.com, you know, um, on, on your phones or whatever, it you know, shows a little info under like where you can, I guess, send a link to the social media outlets that they have or message this article and under the picture of the person. Ella Fitzgerald is known as the first lady of song and Lady Ella was a immensely popular American jazz and song vocalist who interpreted much of the great American songbook. Let's get into it, y'all. Just to warn y'all, y'all know I how I mispronounce the words. Who is Ella Fitzgerald? Ella Fitzgerald turned to singing after a troubled childhood and debuted at the Apollo Theater in 1934. Discovered an amateur contest, she went on to become the top female jazz singer for decades. In 1958, Fitzgerald made history as the first African American woman to win a Grammy Award, due in no small part to her vocal quality, with Luca an um, intonation and a broad range. The singer would go on to win 13 Grammys in total and sell more than 40 million albums. Wow. 
Her multi-volume song books on verse verse are, are among Americans' recording treasures. Early years. Born April 25, 1917, in Newport News, Virginia, Singer Fitzgerald was the product of a common law marriage between William Fitzgerald and Temperance Tempe Williams Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald experienced a, ch- a trouble how a childhood it d- began with her parents separated shortly after her birth. After her birth, you know, back in the day, y'all, I don't know if they still even have common common law here, but if you with somebody so many years, you know, you're basically quote quote married, but not on paper. And I didn't know she was the first black woman. Wow, I mean, I heard of the name, and it's like I knew of this legend, but I didn't know about her. So this is this is neat. Let me continue to read. With her mother, Fitzgerald moved to New Yorkers, New York. They lived there with her mother's boyfriend, Joseph Da Silvia. The family grew in 1923 with the rival Fitzgerald's half-sister, Frances. Struggling financially, young Fitzgerald helped her family out by working as a messenger running numbers and acting as a lookout for a brothel. Now, running numbers, y'all, I think is code for, you know, um, like, okay, you're going to put a dollar box and straight on the three-digit and four-digit, if you know what I mean. Her first career aspiration was to become a dancer. After her mother's death in 1932, Fitzgerald ended up moving in with a aunt. She started skipping school. Fitzgerald was then sent to a special reform school, but didn't stay there long. After, by 1934, Fitzgerald was trying to make it on her own and living on the streets. Still harming her dreams of becoming an entertainer, she entered an amateur contest at Harlem's Apollo Theater. At the contest, she sang the Hoggy Gub. Uh, uh, Cumber Michael tuned Judy as uh, as well as the object of my affection while in the audience. Fitzgerald went on to win the contest $25 first place prize. Early career. The unexpected performance at the Apollo helped help, help set Fitzgerald's career in motion. She soon met band leader and drummer Chick Webb and eventually joined his uh, group as a singer. Fitzgerald recorded Love and Kisses with Webb in 1935 and found herself playing regularly at at one of Harlem's hottest clubs, The Savory. Fitzgerald also put out her first number one hit, 1938's A Tisket, A Tasket, which she co-wrote. Later that year, Fitzgerald recorded her second hit, I Found My Yellow Basket. In addition to her work with Rev, Frigel performed and recorded with the Benny Goodman Orchestra. She had her own side project too, known as the Arrow Fitzgeralds and her, and her Savory 8. Following Webb's death in 1939, Fitzgerald became the leader of the band, which was renamed Errol Fitzgerald and her famous orchestra. Some sources refer to the group as Ellis Fitzgerald and her famous band. Around this time, Fitzgerald was briefly married to Ben um, Cornegay, a convicted drug dealer and hustler. They waited in 1941, but she soon had their union annulled. Rising Star Going out on her own, Fitzgerald landed a deal with Decca Records. She recorded some hit songs with the, uh, with the Ink Spots and Louis Jordan in the early 1940s. Fitzgerald also made her theme debut as Ruby in the 1942's comedy western Ride 'em Cowboy with Bud Arbor and Lou um, Cook. Call Tello. Her career really began to take off in 1946 when she starred working with no- uh, Norman Gans in the f- uh, the future founder of Verve Records. In the mid 1940s, Gans had started jazz at the Bill Atomic, a series of concerts and live records featuring most of the Jeans' great performers. Rich Jones also hired Gans to become her manager. Around this time, Fitzgerald went on tour with Dixie's uh, Gisby's and, and his band. She started changing her singing style, incorporating scat singing during her performances. Fitzgerald fell in love with Gibsy's bass player, May Ray Brown. The pair wed in 1947 and they adopted a child born to Fitzgerald's half-sister, whom they named uh, Raymond Ray Brown Jr. Their marriage ended in 1952. First Lady of Song. And the 1950s and 1960s proved to be a time of great critical and commercial success for Fitzgerald, and she earned the monkey of the First Lady of Song for her mainstream popularity and her own pair of vocal talents. 
Her unique ability to mimic instrumental sounds helped popularize the vocal uh, improvision improvision of scatting, which became her signature technique. In 1956, Fitzgerald became rec- began recording for the first newly created Verve. She made some of her most popular albums for the labels, starting out with 1956 Ella Fitzgerald Sings the Cole Porter Songbook. At the very f- at the very first Grammy Awards in 1958, Fitzgerald picked up her first two Grammys and made history as the first uh, African American woman to win the award for Best Individual Jazz Performance and Best Female Vocal Performance for the two songbook projects: Ellis Fitzgerald sings the Duke Ellington songbook and Ellis Fitzgerald sings the Ivan Bellin songbook, respectively. She worked directly with Ellington on the former album. A truly collaborative soul, Fitzgerald produced a great recording of such artists as Louis Armstrong and Count Basie. She also performed times with Frank Sinatra over the years as well. In 1960, Fitzgerald broke into the Chipotle's rendition of Mac the Knife. She was still going strong well to the 1970s, playing concerts across the globe. One especially memorable concert series from this time was a two-week engagement in New York City in 1974 with Sinatra and Basie. I hope I'm saying the name correctly. Later years and death. By the 1980s, Fitzgerald experienced serious health problems. She had heart surgery in 1986 and had been suffering from diabetes. Diabetes left her blind. Oh, and, and she had both of her legs amputated in 1994. She made her last recording in 1989 and her last public performance in 1991. At New, Jer- uh, uh, New York Carnage Hall. Fitzgerald died on June 15, 1996, at her home in Beverly Hills. In all, Fitzgerald's recorded more than 200 albums and some 2,000 songs in her lifetime. Wow. Her total record of sales exceeded 40 million. Her many accolades included 13 Grammy Awards, the NAACP Image Award for Lifetime Achievement, and the Prentice- Presidential Medal of Freedom. While some critics complained that her style and voice lacked the depth of some of her more booze counterparts, her success and the respect that she garnered from the, the big names in the music industry showed that Fitzgerald was in a class of her own. Mel Torp described her as the high priestess of song, and Pearl Bailey called her the greatest singer of them all. I'm surprised they didn't have a link there. I could just go to Pearl Bailey. Okay. According to Fitzgerald's official website, and Bing Cosby once said, man, one, man, one with a child, Ella's the greatest of them all. Since her passing, Fitzgerald has been honored and remembered in many ways. The United States Postal Service honors the late singer with a commemorative stamp celebrating the 90th anniversary of her birth. The same year, the tribute album, We All, we all Love Ella, celebrating the first lady song, features such artists as Gladys Knight, Etta James, Queen Latifah, performing some of Fitzgerald's class- classics. And that is it. It was last of W, March the 2020, it says on here. I was going to do two of them, y'all, but the boy I read, boy, I realized, heck, my behind is starting to get sleepy. And so, sorry, y'all, if y'all thought it was going to be two. I originally did plan on doing two stories tonight, but uh, it's time for me to go to bed. And hopefully, you know, because my sleeping pattern off and now I want to go to bed. So anyways, y'all, hugs and loves, good night, stay safe, blessings, positive vibes, hugs and loves, y'all, I'll see y'all again with another episode podcast of our Kings and Queens tomorrow. Okay, take care.